This is Sean here, the Urban Tactical Survival. Coming to you with a video on a piece of equipment that I'm very pleased with. I'm sure you guys may recognize this is the Self Reliance Outfitters Canteen Cook Kit. There's our logo. Very well constructed bag and the contents are very well constructed. Stainless steel. This is a bag I've been wanting to get my hands on for a long time and finally got my hands on one and I'm very pleased. And you would be pleased if you got one. So without further ado, I'm gonna go into the bag and open it up and take a look at the contents. I've already started to upgrade, put a little upgrades on it. Uh, something you can do. Uh, I plan on doing adding some because of the molly strapping all over it you can add other bags to it that are molly compatible and uh, extend the usability of the bag uh, but the bag itself is very well constructed uh, Ghidorah material uh, so here's the lid for your nesting pot it is a perforated lid as you can see holes down on the bottom there for straining and these holes here these slits right here I'll get to in a minute and show you what the functionality of those are here is the actual stove this in conjunction with a uh, alcohol stove such as this one you're ready to burn and cook put your alcohol in here set your stove on top and you're ready to go holes on the top the heat from the alcohol stove will come through and heat up your pot or whatever boil boil your pot or whatever water you're boiling it will get through there and boil it's uh, very well made, stainless steel, and if properly take, taken care of, this will last a lifetime. The key wood is properly taken care of. That's your stove. It also comes with some mini infernos. Mini infernos are a fuel source to help get a fire going. I've taken the liberty of putting some Gorilla Tape around it to keep the cap from popping off. And this is what the pucks look like. You take one, you break it open, expose the fine fibers on the inside. It's uh, lubricated with uh, some type of accelerant to help get fire going. But these are what would be used to get a fire going. I'll put the strap back on here because I don't want the top coming off. That's something you might want to consider doing yourself if you get this this kit. It is a very, very well put together kit. Dave Canterbury has done himself very good with this. And I've already upgraded the uh, canting kit itself does not come with a cup such as this. This is one of the cups from my Stanley cook uh, system. And this is what I cook my coffee in. This right here. So. Uh, that's an upgrade. The water bottle itself with the Pathfinder logo, 32 ounce bottle, made of stainless steel. Every, all the items in here are made of stainless steel, very heavy constructed stainless steel. This bottle is well made and key word, properly maintained and taken care of. This system will last you a lifetime. I don't see this being replaced no time soon, not by me very well made top has a rubber gasket on it 
to ensure no leakage and it goes all the way around the top of the top notice there in the center stainless steel cap there Pathfinder logo on the top you can see that this morning I will be doing a burn see how long it takes to give me a rapid burning uh, boiling a uh, cup of uh, water last but not least the actual nesting pot Pathfinder logo on it as, as well I love the bat wing handles they're a little short but uh, not designed to sit on the fire got your stove set on top of the stove and you're you're good to go I would not set this down in a fire on the coals you can if you want to but I wouldn't I'd use the stove it defeats the purpose of even bringing the stove you're gonna set this directly in this in the fire then you stand the chances of the handles heating up and you're not able to pick it up so I would use the stove some places you're not able to uh, you're limited to campfires they don't allow you to uh, start a fire so that's where these stove these these systems come in you can still get your boiling water heat up your food cook whatever it is that you have you need to be cooked and uh, leave no footprint is the key with a big old campfire you're leaving a footprint now on these pots you notice there are holes one there one there on either side here's where the lid comes in you place the lid with those slit slits directly in conjunction with those holes and here in this side pouch you have what is called fish mouth spreaders these are used in this configuration now you have a bailing pot you can go bail water you can also use this to set it in a, off a tripod to set it over the top of a fire if you choose to but there you go a bail I like this idea and there's your fish mouth spreaders also in here I uh, sure let me get these out because these are extra it also comes with a ferrocino rod this is your ignition your ignition you get sparks off of this starts a fire very well made I like it not too big not too small nice and compact for this particular type of uh, unit uh, striker I'm not too uh, giddy about but it works if you don't have any anything else but this it will work and the add-on pieces of well, this bag does come with a strap for easy carrying very well made bag now the add-on pieces I've added I've already started I've got wet wet fire and these are little white bricks on the inside that actually will ignite even if it's raining so you get caught in a downpour it's raining lightly raining you can still strike these and get a fire going hopefully you've got some wood that is dry you've picked up wood that is dry and you can uh, save it from being uh, drenched in water in the rain and uh, these will help okay that's an extra piece of equipment I've added I've also added a container 
of waterproof matches just in case you should always have more than one source of uh, combustion the five C's it's something Dave Canterbury uh, lives by 10 C's but I'm working with five C's today then I have a cigarette lighter basic cigarette lighter should always have more than one combustion device one is none two is one here I've got three four combustion devices I've got my light my fire spork now the uh, original utensils that came with it was the old Boy Scout utensils sport a uh, spoon fork and a knife that hook on in the middle with little little catches in the middle not a bad not a bad setup but when you're wanting to travel light as light as you possibly can you want something that is light and this practically weighs almost nothing I got a fork on one end and a spoon on the other that serves me very well I'm happy with this the light my fire spork is a good additive and of course bottle of fuel you need that for an alcohol stove fuel I'm using today is heat heat I've noticed burns a lot cleaner than the other uh, types of fuel I've used I've used uh, isopropyl alcohol 91% and that tends to leave a carbon buildup of uh, soot on on the stoves on my pots um, but heat seems to be doing very well and it burns clean, a lot cleaner than uh, anything else I've used. And of course, a small rag for wiping up spillage or anything uh, when you're ready to clean up, a small rag would do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up and get a burn going test this to see just how long it takes to give me a boiling a boiling pot of water uh, a test burn is something I have not seen anyone do with this particular type of uh, setup and I'm gonna do that for you this morning so give me a minute and I'll come back with that in just a short minute okay I've got my pot and the fire going get my water in here about 20 ounces of water, see how long it takes. I'm going to put my lid on. As you can see, probably can't see the flames, but there is a fire. And put my pot on. I'll be back when I've got a rolling boil. So as you guys know, when I'm doing these reviews in the morning, I like to have my cup of coffee. So as it would be, I forgot my coffee strainer. I've got my coffee, creamer, and sugar. Forgot the strainer. What I do also have as an upgrade to the bag is I've taken the liberty of carrying uh, these in reinforced with some threads, paper towels, that you can use as a strainer. And that's what I'm going to do. I am going to take coffee, the amount of coffee that I need for a cup of coffee, put it inside. I'm going to have my cup of coffee this morning. So there you have it. Now, I just tie that off. Individual 
cup of coffee. I'll be back with that. So, I've got my cup, coffee inside, little bag, cream and sugar is already entered in the cup. I'm just waiting on the water. Let's take a, take a look and see where we're at with the water. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's steam and bubbles indicating a boil temperature coming soon. So, for my coffee, I really don't want boiling hot water. So, I think right now is a good, would make a good cup of coffee. So let's get that off. Okay. Pot off. Yeah. Let's pour that in there. And okay, so what didn't work well is the coffee method that I originally started with didn't work as well as I planned it to. So what I had to do was do it the old cowboy way. Put the coffee grinds down in your pot or your coffee cup, pour your water on top of it, and then let them get saturated. But now, they would just turn it up and drink it and get a mouthful of coffee grinds. That I don't want. So I'm using this as a strainer and we'll pour the contents of my cup into my nesting pot and we'll sift out all the coffee grinds and should just end up with nothing but coffee. And that's working. I can hear it going through. So, I'm going to get that done and I'll be back hopefully with a nice cup of coffee. Okay, so the straining process is complete and I've got my cup of coffee. Nothing like a cup of coffee early in the morning. Gets you going. Okay. So this is Sean from Urban Tactical Survival with a burn test on the self-reliance cook bottle cook kit from Dave Canterbury. Very good. I'm very pleased with this equipment and we'll be using it more and more. Till next time, now is the time to prepare and always remember to check your six.